Hello and welcome to Kitchen Counter Crafts. If you like this video, would you please like, comment, share, and subscribe? And if you will, hit the bell icon and you will be notified of new videos coming out. Thank you. Today I have the Faber Castell loom for you. And this is a fountain pen and it's actually quite lovely. And there is a definite bonus, I think. I don't know, maybe, maybe it's not, um, of going to a pen club. So I got this beauty at my local pen club and it's in Oklahoma City. And we just meet and exchange views and just kind of get a chance to play with one another's pen collections and take a look at those. And one of the ladies was selling her Faber-Castell loom uh, because she has one in fine, which is this one. She has a medium and a broad, and she actually prefers the larger nibs to this one. So I wanted to show this to you because it is an older pen. They have different ones now called the Essentio and Hexo. Essentio is not as heavy, but you can actually still readily find these on like eBay and a couple other sites. So I wanted to, to show you this. It's It's kind of an interesting pen and by the way before I so this is the first Faber Castell I've I've owned and uh, before this this is what I knew of Faber Castell and that is gelatos markers I have all kinds of art equipment art um, supplies from Faber Castell I have their paints so they're known in the industry for a lot of quality products and what you're also going to see is their night logo you can see it on here better than you can here. So um, on the finial, they have engraved that. It's, it's actually quite marvelous that they've done that. And um, so it has a, a plastic cap, a very nice broad clip. And then this, I just kind of fell in love with right as I opened it up. It's very heavy. Well, not like very, very heavy that you can't write with it, but it's a nice substantial weight and it's an aluminum body. And then uh, on further review, let me zoom in here a little bit more. You can see that the nib has these dots on it and no vent hole. So it does not have a vent, which I think is kind of interesting, uh, but it is a steel nib and uh, just, you know, the regular uh, feed, plastic feed underneath. Um, and then you can also see these little cylinder lines here on the grip, which are very interesting. They are comfortable. Some of my pen friends said that they did not like that. I like it. Um, it helps my fingers from slipping. And then it has like this plastic um, piece right here, but I, just think that the nib is is truly interesting it is an absolute joy to write with and uh, this does not screw on it is a snap uh, and it's it's not that difficult I read some reviews they said it was really difficult to snap the cap back on but I don't know it wasn't for me um, so on here you can let me let me see if I can get in uh, without it being blurry that looks blurry to me hang on there we go so you have the night logo here the two nights and then um, the engraving on the plastic kind of interesting uh, a couple other people mentioned I just have my fingerprint there that this was leaving a lot of fingerprints for them this is a nice matte uh, plastic cap but this was making them crazy doesn't bother me at all there's also like this kind of lip at the end but I I don't know, I like the industrial design of this. It does not come with a uh, converter. This one, my pen friend had purchased already, and it is just a standard converter that um, it goes in. So anyway, nice, very nice pen, I think. And so let me show you how well this writes. Um, so let's see, what did I say? Uh, standard it it normally came with a standard cartridge uh, not a converter which I said it accepts any standard international converters but you may have to fiddle with some of them and then um, it has a number five steel nib it's available in extra fine fine medium and broad and 
the matte, it also has like matte finishes and the glossy finish, this, this metallic shiny finish is actually called the piano finish. So I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, on another website for pens, I was uh, looking this up and it called it minimalistic stationery. I think that is actually a really good description for this, that it is kind of minimalistic, but it's not minimalistic when you go to write with it. So um, I just, again, I can't believe that the pen is as heavy as it is. Oh, oh, whoops, before I start writing, let me do some comparisons because, because the price point for this is around $50. So um, I think for about 50 US dollars at the time of filming this, you might be able to find it for less, maybe 45. It's still kind of an entry, mid-entry level pen, I would say maybe, but I, a lot of people are comparing it to the Metropolitan, the Pilot Metropolitan. So that'd be like half the price. And so people are saying, well, that doesn't make any sense because why don't you just get a Metropolitan instead? Um, so I can, I can see that and I think that's legitimate. Um, this is a Twisby Eco. And so I like to compare it with that as well. And that's the price point of around $30. So that's cheaper still um, than the Faber Castell. Now this is my Pilot Prera. It's much smaller, especially you can just see the size, but uh, about the same price range. And then I have the Diplomat Traveler, which I've been using quite a bit lately. And it is, um, a little bit bigger hmm, go figure anyway so i would say about the same size but you know it's kind of hard to see how uh these are measuring up so this is coming in right at like 5.1 this is 5.2 inches this is about five and a half this one is pretty small at 4.8 and then this is whoop, I think it's right at, oh, I guess it is bigger, 5.2. All right, so then uncapped, you're gonna see a little bit more of a difference. You know, I haven't even put anything in this Twisby in a while. It's because I've been using my Pilot Elite, so goodness, that just gets smaller and smaller, doesn't it? All right, so here we go. Um, so similar to Metropolitan in size, Traveler, nope, mm, a little bit smaller. Twisby's big, Prera is little again, but again, price point, and also just kind of what you like. So anyway, hopefully that gives you a pretty good comparison in terms of how big it is. But the nice thing is that you can actually post uh, some of these pens you cannot post, like Twisby you cannot, but this you can, and then you can write with it. I don't write with my pens posted. It's just not a habit of mine. So there you go. That's just kind of how that goes. So I don't like it posted, but you can actually post it. Um, so let's try it out. First on cheap copy paper. So this is the European... Let me make sure. There we go. Faber Castell Loom. And this is a fine nib. Ever so slight feedback, which I like. And the ink on this is Eroshizuku Suki Yo. So I have that same one in there and in here, just been kind of utilizing that. So not too bad on on just a copy paper, but it's a it's a very nice fine. So if you take a look, it's kind of a little bit like my medium. So that's to be expected because it is a European nib. 
So let's take a look at it on here on uh, Rhodia.pad and see how it compares. So the feedback is quite reduced on the nicer paper, but again, I, I like feedback. And it's not that much feedback if you can't stand that. It's, it's not bad at all. So pretty nice on the nicer paper, but actually not too shabby on the other. So there's the comparison on the papers and I also um, used it to write with so that I could just give you a nice comparison. I This is not that great of paper and it just, I don't know how to describe it, it just glides and uh, it has a very smooth fine nib and I just find that um, the, the feedback is pleasant as I mentioned um, it is it's it's kind of a different pen it just doesn't look like any other pens it doesn't feel like another pen I know that sounds weird but the grip section is kind of rounded out um, if you will and it's very uh, comfortable and substantial in the hand. Um, for you, if you have larger hands, this might not be a good uh, pen, especially if you do not like to post. Although I have to say just the, the grip size still feels pretty significant. Um, and it's not it's not dainty by any means because like the Traveler, I know my, my husband cannot stand it because it's just, so thin and I love it uh, because it's light, it's beautiful and I utilize that quite a bit. In fact, um, this is my Traveler's Fine Nib on this side and then this is the uh, Faber Castell. In fact, I should probably jot that down so that I remember. So th there's a side-by-side -side comparison, if you will, of the fine nibs. And um, so I think that's about it. The only downside to this is that um, it is out of production, so you may have to go look looking for it. Um, although, if you go to a pen club, which I recommend you do because the Pelican Hubs are coming, so look that up and see in your city if you have that or not, and um, see if you can find that. And you might luck out like I did. Thanks, Tori, uh, for selling me your pen. And uh, so you might luck out and get just a really beautiful pen that you can add to your collection. So let me know your thoughts. Have you heard of Faber-Castell? Maybe you use it for art supplies like I did and didn't even know that they made such a lovely pen like this one. That is just a joy to write with. So until next time, bye.